Hey everyone, it's Jenna Rodriguez. Welcome to the next amazing episode of the Brave Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your host, Jenna Rodriguez, and like I already said, and, and I'm excited that you're here and we have Ashley Shelley uh, Trottier, is that correct? Trottier. Trottier, I'm yeah. so sorry. It's a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough one, right? I don't, uh, it's a unique spelling for that matter, but we have yes. Ashley. How are you, Ashley? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Welcome to the show. And I just want to remind everyone listening that the Brave Entrepreneur is something I created um, a couple years ago. And, uh, and it was just, a, it's, it's the opportunity for entrepreneurs to really uh, get grounded in what it takes to stay in the game and how easy it is to play, even though it's not the easy way, it's the brave way, right? And easy for me is that it's simple as a decision. And so we get, bring guests to you that have made that decision and, uh, and share their stories and share their brave experience. And so we are going to do more of that today with Ashley. And before we start, I just want to remind you, you know, my business, bravemasters.com, is all about helping you, the entrepreneur, build a brand that you are very proud of, that you know how to articulate who you are, as well as monetize uh, what you're natural talents and amazing gifts are and that's what we do at brave masters and so at the brave entrepreneur podcast we bring you guests such as ashley so welcome and i would love for you to share with them what your business is all about thank you You're um, so yes i'm ashley shelley trotier and my brand is ashley shelley which is my uh, maiden name shelley and i started my brand in 2015 uh, well, actually, I started it in 2014, but I, I left my corporate job in 2015 to do full-time working on my uh, brand, and it's planners and notebooks and all kinds of stationary products that help women. Uh, my tagline is create your best days. So it's it. products that are meant to help women create their own best days by planning on paper. Wonderful. Yeah, I've checked your website out and, and they're beautiful. First of all, you do a great job of, of designing something kind of inspirational to look at every single day, right? Right. And, uh, so tell us a little bit. So you said you were in corporate. What were you doing in corporate America? I was a graphic designer um, and creative yeah. director. So I went to school and college for graphic design and learned how to do all of the uh, technical parts of it, the design programs. I learned photography and all kinds of things like that. Um, but then in the corporate world, I was doing all kinds of commercial graphic design. So. Uh -huh. Well, that makes a lot of sense because now I, get, I know who the designer is of your products. They're beautiful. Yes, I uh, design everything myself. Yeah, and so, do you, um, and so what had you or what inspired you to, to leave corporate America and how did that all happen? Uh, well, I graduated from college in 2010 so I worked in the corporate world for about five years, and my first job was in the fashion world. I was doing graphic design for a fashion company, basically doing like their marketing materials and yeah. things like that. Um, I did that for a few years, and then I ended up leaving that job to go to a completely different job altogether. It was actually in the political world, which I'm not super into politics, but it was a design job um, because it paid a lot more money than what I was making. I felt like I wasn't really making where or wasn't where I wanted to be financially after the first few years. And I wasn't really getting consistent raises that I felt were worth like what I was actually doing. So right. I left that first job um, and it, it was great. Like I had a lot of good experience there and it was really fun, but I kind of wanted to try something different. And I was young. I mean, I was in my early twenties. So right. I took a different job um, just basically for the financial part of it. And then that was a contract job. So I kind of did a few different things. And my last job that I was working before I left to start my brand was actually in the weight loss um, world. So I was working for a company doing their graphic design and it wasn't anything I was passionate about. I'm not like, you know, super into um, the, the like concept of all the weight loss stuff that we were doing. It was very technical and um, a lot of, you know, ingredients and all kinds of things that, I'm very like everything in moderation and you stay pretty healthy kind of person. So it was just a lot out of my like normal things that I would be working on. Or yeah, about. for sure. Um, but so yeah, that was my last job. And then I started designing things on the side, like working on the weekends or at night after my corporate job. And I came up with my own Etsy shop. So I don't know if you've heard of Etsy, but yeah. it's just like mm -hmm. the online marketplace. People sell like crafts and design things. So right. that's where I got my start was on Etsy. 
That's so cool. And so is the, the planners um, that you design and the different products, is it something, uh, I guess, you know, that you, that you did on a daily basis anyway, and now you just wanted to design something that could be obviously marketed or how did that whole idea come to be? Um, so I've always been a planner person. I like writing things down. So that's always been a passion of mine. I think ever since middle school, I've used a planner. Um, so I've, it's just part of me I'm, and something that I really enjoy doing. Um, so once I had that design factor in there, then I was able to produce something that I could use for myself. So um, I started designing, actually my first product was a budgeting product and it was something that I was doing for myself to get my finances in order. And right. I, I was doing it, you know, writing things out by hand, but I eventually designed it all, you know, professionally and had it printed and tried it out. Um, and that was my first like thing that made me an entrepreneur really was that product. Yeah. So yeah. I started with that. Um, it's called the budget notebook and it's a very simple product to help women just stay on top of their finances, keep things organized, keep I the motivation it. going. Um, and that was something I really needed in my twenties after college. Cause I think a lot of us don't really get into actual budgeting and thinking about where our money is going. So that was important for me to do personally. And it just kind of turned into something that I realized a lot of people could use. So yes, when sure. I put that in a shop and started promoting it on Instagram and social media, it just kind of took off. And I don't think I was really expecting that. Um, and it, it kind of made me into a business person just quickly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. accelerated it very much. So, you know, and yeah. I think that's what I, I love about your story really is that you, you've, you know, you mentioned the different, which is interesting. I used to, I used to be a computer aided fashion designer in uh, oh, wow. press headquarters. So, um, so I come from a fashion background and, um, design yeah. and all that too, you know, and, and so there's that in common. And then you right. talk numbers cause I also used to be a controller. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so I've jumped all over the place, but it pays off yeah. to be a business owner actually. Exactly. Um, but it, it, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that all along those jobs, it's almost like it wasn't aligned with who you are as a brand. And yeah. I always say brand is who you are, right? At yeah. the core. Right. And, and, and it, and although you're selling a product, you are a part of this product because it's something that you, you, you actively, like you said, since you were very young, um, you're very much committed to planners and writing things down and, and being, you know, organized. And, and so what works for people listening or watching this is just to pay attention to where's the alignment with your yeah. brand of who you are, right? That, because right. if it's not heart centered and you feel connected to it, it's just for the money, right? Like the political job. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Money. Like I, I did not have any passion for that whatsoever. Yeah. And, but it's funny though, because the things that you learn along the way that you are passionate about, you can keep those things. Yeah, like, for sure. Well, and they just add to who you are. I mean, I've probably become a completely different person right. since I've started my business. Being an entrepreneur kind of makes you grow up. Absolutely. Like I, I'm 31 years old. Um, so I'm not, you know, super young anymore, but I, I feel like I've changed drastically in the past two years of running a business. It's made me get more clear on who I am, on what I think about all kinds of things in life, um, what I want for my future, for my family. So yeah, it, it really is like you take little bits and pieces from each thing that you do as you go through your career. And then you come out with, you know, the things that you really care about. Yeah. So that's kind of how it happened for me. And I love that because it's like, and you, you fell upon that a lot sooner than some people, right? And just really yeah. took the brave to step out of corporate and, and take, take it on at, at a full-time rate, right? And so you yeah. said you were doing it at Etsy, which I think is a great platform to get started for especially right. creatives, right? And, yeah. uh, and so where, where, how did you take the leap? When did you, was it a safety in numbers or was it like, if I'm going to, do this, I got to go full time and just kind of like leap of faith or how did you get your brave on when it came to that? So I definitely didn't do it as a leap of faith completely, but it's, I think it's always a leap of faith. If you take, you know, your stability in a corporate job or your stability in a nine to five job and try something for yourself, it's, right. that's always going to be a leap of faith, no matter how small or big it's going to be um, financially at least. So for me, for sure. I waited until 
the sales from my Etsy shop were basically matching what I was making every week at my corporate job. And when it did that for about three to six months consistently, and I kept talking to my husband, which was my fiance at the time, and, you know, talking about those numbers and thinking about it. And right. um, yeah, so once it started kind of mimicking the income and it wasn't exact and it, some weeks it would be more and some weeks it would be less, Sure. but just in general, Stay it was low. close. Yeah. yeah. So it was after about, like I said, three to six months of watching it closely. Um, I decided, okay, I think I can take this leap and, um, leave my corporate job and do this full time. Um, I did take on a couple of freelance design jobs from, you know, connections yeah. that I had in the field or friends that were also working for other um, employers that had, you know, things that they needed help with. Right. So you can always have those little things that support you financially along the way. Um, and I still do stuff like that. Now, if things are a little bit slow in the off season of planners and things like that, I'll take on, a freelance client. Um, right. I do product photography. So there's things that I can still do that I have skills in that can help others in the commercial design industry. Um, but obviously in the end, I just want to be doing my thing. Yeah. 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 Your thing, your one yeah. thing, you know, um, I'm glad you said that because that's also how I kind of made it through is yeah. I've been an entrepreneur, you know, over like 11 years now. And, uh, and yet I have skills, like you said, you know, I've got, right. I've got design, I've got marketing, I've got sales, I've got also accounting, which comes really simple to me, right? If that's you give good. me, you know, a company that needs books handled, I could go do it. Right. And, yeah. um, and so when I transitioned into entrepreneurship and was building, you know, it was time to work full time on the business yet. I sub, I also kind of, um, took on some freelance jobs of accounting because right. it was good contract money to pay the mortgage, yeah. right? <laughs> Feed the family. Right. Um, and I think there's just so many like situations like that where yeah. people start a business in the beginning. And I think a lot of us just, um, well, I say us, but I didn't do that specifically, but I hear a lot of people that start small businesses and they take that leap and they just kind of like jump without really a plan necessarily or um, other ideas of what they can do to keep themselves going forward. So for me, if, if I would have looked at, you know, needing to take a freelance job every now and then as a failure, then I probably wouldn't be here right, right now. Um, right. It's, it's what I needed to do to keep going forward. And every year as my brand has grown, I've kind of looked at things as percentages. Like in the very beginning, it was like 50% my brand income and 50% freelance things that I took on. Mm -hmm. And then every you know year it's changed and it's the percentage of my brand is probably like 80% now, whereas it's 20% oh. freelance. So right. who's to say next year, I'm not there and I don't ever take on a freelance job again, but I also might want to for, you know, Christmas money or whatever it is. I mean, and I also enjoy working for other people when I have a little more flexibility and I'm not like forced to, you know, do that. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's something that a lot of us might look at as some kind of failure to have to need extra income. To go backwards in a way. Yeah. But yeah. really it's like, that's the thing that's going to keep you going. It's going to give you the ability to have your own thing a hundred percent one day. Yeah. Or just quitting and saying, well, I didn't make it, you know, I, I only had enough to pay almost all of my bills, but it wasn't enough. So I went back to my corporate job, but I don't, I'm hoping I never would have You to won't? Go. Of course <laughs> not. <laughs> you yeah, got I right think, idea. I think I just wouldn't let it happen, you know? I'm just, right, exactly. I, know I just love it too much that I couldn't go backwards. I it's don't. not an option, right? That's the, right. that's the brave in all of us, right? It's the not an option. Find the things that are out of necessity that you must do. Yeah the necessity of whatever it is, whether it's, you know, to, to be your own boss or to whatever, whatever right. motivates you. But, um, it's funny cause I, I agree with this, you know, there's, if you, unless you have like a savings or something that you you want to use as your investment, bottom line, you have to have funding, you right. have to have funding and it can become, it can come from savings or your retirement or whatever you want to use, or it can be from another revenue stream that doesn't yeah. mean you failed. It means that you're funding the dream and you're funding the vision that has to build itself. You know, yeah. I think that's um, interesting that you say all this because so many people listening, you know, it's kind of, they may look at us and go, well, you know, they've made it, they figured it out and they, you know, did all the, it's like, it was that easy. And Oh gosh, no. 
<laughs> no, every uh, single month like, is a different strategy. Yeah. So yeah. It's for constantly real. reevaluating and um, yep. thinking about new ways to bring in money or um, come up with new, you know, ways to run my business. Um, yep. Freelance Techniques jobs and things there. like that. You know, how I want to market myself for those things separate from my brand. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really picky about my brand, but I'm just as picky about the freelance jobs that I do because I want to have a good reputation and I want people to trust me. So it's, you know, everything that I do is just as important as yeah. I'm working on my own stuff or if I'm working on a freelance client's product photography, um, all of that stuff is just as important to me if I'm doing it in that moment. You know, obviously the goal, like I said earlier, is to work 100% for myself. And I think that I'm on track for that because you I'm are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, well. I think, I think next year will be that year. I do. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it for sure. Congratulations, first of all, and just sticking with it. You. And, you know, I always say don't quit five minutes before the miracle. Yeah. Cause you don't know. You, you never know. know. Yeah. And a I mean, lot of us get so close. It's mm -hmm. yeah. You just got to keep going. Yeah. Keep the foot on the gas pedal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's so good that you're, you know, you speak to this because I think people get the, they have, they make a story up about, you know, you know, going back to a contract job equals failure. And it was like, that's a story. That's not, that's a funder, you know, that's what's right. your business. So, you know, be smart about it, do what you have to do, but don't give up on the dream or the, or the business because it's an infancy. That's you're an infancy stage right now. And cause it's yeah. like a couple years, you know, um, if not sometimes more than a couple years, uh, you know, it's right. just like a toddler. <laughs> you know, yeah. you I don't have it. children yet, but I feel like having this business before I have kids is like the best thing I could have done yes. because it's teaching me so much about growing something and starting from the very beginning and all these rough, you know, patches and ups and downs. I feel like it's going to be very similar. It will. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know if I did the right thing or not, but I started, I started the business or started being an entrepreneur entrepreneurship when my, my youngest was two. <laughs> so oh. I had two years on her, uh, you know, of learning, going through the terrible twos and all that stuff. And it really does exist by the way. So, you know, even yeah. business has terrible twos sometimes. Yeah. And, um, you're so right. You know, it's, it, it is a parallelism, you know, between the two. I do. I tell my clients all the time, like, this is a baby. You can't ignore it. You need right. to nurture it. You got to feed it. You got to like take it and give it a bath, you know, yeah. and repeat, you know, all these things because it really, you have to give it notice and attention. And when you don't, it doesn't thrive. Right. Yeah. So that's it's all you're true. doing. You know, sometimes it's, it's just a matter of going to sleep that night and waking up the next day with a fresh start. <laughs> right. um, that's one of the things that uh, speaking of sleep is, was really important to me that I don't think was really meshing in the corporate world that, you know, I'm not an early to bed kind of person. I'm a <laughs> late night owl kind of person. I always have been. I think a lot of people in my family are that way too. Like yeah, my grandmother that lives in Pensacola will sit up till 2 a.m. and talk now and she's 86 years old. Wow. <laughs> that's just how she is and that's how I am naturally. Yeah. Um, and so I think I've always struggled with that. You know, I, I'm a night owl. That's when I'm very creative. It's when I come up with a lot of new ideas and I never had the opportunity to use that in the corporate world because I wasn't at my job at, you know, yeah. midnight or something. And yeah. now without, you know, not having kids, I can work whenever I want, really. Yeah. Um, sure. I try to keep a very, you know, normal schedule at least um, because my husband works nine to five. So he comes home at six o'clock and we do dinner and, you know, we have our own like schedule that we kind of go for ourselves. But um, having I know that where you are at midnight. <laughs> yeah. He's in bed and you're yeah. on the computer. <laughs> or he could be playing a video game or it's like, right. no kids. So we really have a lot of freedom. Like it's kind of just, you know, we go with the flow. Yeah. He's a night owl too, but he makes it work somehow getting up early in the morning and, and, you know, doing the nine to five thing. But I don't know, for me, it just never really, I never got to that point where I was completely comfortable and felt like I was, I don't know what the word is, like operating at full capacity in a yeah. corporate job. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I was never in that zone because I was... Right having that when I was at home. So it wasn't happening at work. And obviously, you know, I did a good job at my, at my corporate jobs, but I don't think I was as creative as I could have been. And yeah, so got it. I have the complete freedom to work whenever I want. It's a different world. And I've come up with things now that I would have probably never thought of back yeah. in those days, you know? Yeah, um, for sure. So yeah, I can stay up late 
if I want to and work on things or I can, you know, work a regular day. Um, but I just kind of, you know, don't, I don't wake up to an alarm. I sleep until I wake up. Um, and I don't know, for some reason I require a lot of sleep. So I sleep, I get a good night's sleep. <laughs> I wake up and... Oops, we have a little. Uh oh. You're good. Yeah, still things? in for a second. There we okay, go. We're back. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about the flexibility and freedom of being an entrepreneur is setting that schedule the way that works best for me and not um, not having that guilt anymore about right. feeling like my schedule or the things that my body um, might require for me to work at my best capabilities can't be met because of the regular schedule that I used to have. Whereas now I can, you know, give myself the things that I need physically. That way I can operate at full capacity and get the most done every day uh, yeah. without feeling like, Oh, you know, somebody's waiting on me or, um, you know, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm not as perky at 9 a.m. as my coworker is, you know, but that's right. just not me and that's okay. Like we are all different. Um, but, you know, I had such a huge sense of responsibility in the corporate world that I always did feel guilty about not being 100% like yeah. wide awake and, and cheery when everybody else, it's kind of a joke in my family. Everybody knows like, don't talk to me before breakfast. <laughs> like, it's, it's, you know, that's just me. I'm with you. Like, I'm so <laughs> not a morning person. Yeah, it's just um, not how I roll, but my, it works now. It's, it, it all worked out for the best. <laughs> and it's good <laughs> because one of the things I always talk about to clients and, and you know, and people is, is that's the fun part is you get to, you get to business, design a business lifestyle, right? It's business by design. Yeah. And you yeah. get to choose the hours that you are. I have always prioritized my weekends because I, my child was two, you know, so, right. you know, I had the, had children and, um, and my oldest was, you know, nine when we started and it's, and so weekends were important to me to re recharge, spend time with them. And so I, I was like, I'll work, you know, Monday through Friday, full speed ahead. Um, yeah. she was in daycare. They, that was my first employee <laughs> was daycare and, and a maid and lawn kelp. <laughs> Those yeah. are my first employees, right? Because yeah. um, I always felt guilty about that too. And I'm like, well, hold on a minute. That's my team, right? That's the first team I got to hire. Um, exactly. I can do this. But it's, it's, you know, making your business your business. You know, you can work whenever you want to work when it's you're the boss. And yes, there may be, um, and it depends what kind of business you have. Clearly, you know, you design and create products. And I service clients like on one-on-one -on -one calls and things like that. And so yet I still get to choose which hours I want to start or not start. I don't right. start before 10. <laughs> you know? yeah. so don't blame me, you at all. I was like, it's <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah. It's, it's really nice to have that flexibility. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's funny because in the very beginning, I remember I used to talk to my husband, you know, late at night, laying in bed, talking about business and what I was going to do, what my right. plan was. And I used to tell him, he probably laughs about this now, but I used to tell him how I just wanted to work for myself so that I could have no stress. And I would just be, I would, <laughs> my days would be like, I would go to Starbucks in the middle of the day and I would work on my laptop there. And everything would just be like this dream that we all think that entrepreneurship yes. is. <laughs> How's but that it turns out? out, it turns out that it is not that at all. But the underlying thing is, that freedom and, and like that sense of um, myself that I have now, I'm, I'm actually being hundred percent myself. Right. It's so much more amazing and rewarding than I could have ever even thought. Yeah. It would be. I was thinking, you know, having a flexible schedule would be awesome. I had no idea how crazy it would feel to like just be that flexible <laughs> day and be able to create my life. Yeah. Right? It's not that many people get to do that. Um, yeah. And I think going back to the whole brave thing, it, that's, it's, it's very scary to do that. Um, yeah. and I, I mean, I'm sitting here at, you know, over two years, I didn't know I would make it through the first month and right. the first year <laughs> I was like, Oh my gosh, I did what this did I just do? year. You know, it, it worked out for an entire year. Maybe it'll work out for two years. And I mean, I'm, I'm over two years now and I don't, I don't feel that fear anymore. I, I feel, um, you know, a sense of like, 
I have it under control now and I, I've learned the ins and outs and it only took me the two years. So, yeah. you know, for anybody that's like thinking about it or, you know, is in the very beginning stages, if, if it's the first year, like just give yourself, <laughs> you know, some, some freedom to realize that like, yeah. Hey, you know, nothing's going to be exactly <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be a wild ride, but to me, it's totally worth it. And I think if that's your personality, if, you know, if you have it in you to be an entrepreneur, yeah, you're going to make it work. It's just going to happen. Cause yeah, you that's, that's not number one. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Number one. Don't quit and figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's very possible. I love that. And, and it does, it gets me really excited for, you know, not only to just kind of watch your enthusiasm about entrepreneurship. I, I, I didn't have that ex example growing up, even though I had the spirit of it and I, yeah. you know, a mom that was an artist and but she was she didn't really monetize the art and so she was talented and I I'm, I'm an artist too so I guess that's where I got that and then I had a yeah. computer programmer so thank God for computers <laughs> so exactly. as, well as my dad and and so it was very corporate and house mom and and things like that and so I was like well wh what's this entrepreneur thing you know because I don't that's right. kind of what I'm looking at but I don't know how to get there um, yep. And so I just, I, I just love the, the, the entrepreneur spirit that you bring and the example that you share because it, it really requires something to be brave and brave lives, I think, in every entrepreneur because it is not the easy way. It is the brave way. Yes. And it requires, um, like you were talking about the flexibility, the freedom, like, oh, this will be great. This is like a dream come yeah. true. And you're like, well, hold on a minute. If you remember you know, thinking to self is that we're used to certainty. We're used to routine. We're used to structure, you know, yeah. and uh, even just, you know, I, I, at least in my opinion. And so when we become entrepreneurs, that doesn't really exist unless we make it right. We have right. to create it. We have to self-generate it. And, uh, yes. and so it's, it's really a very scary thing to have yes. your entire uh, life, including your, you know, income, all those things. Yeah. You I'm wake sure. up every day and you're, you're in control of that. So to some people that is, could be the best feeling in the world, but in the beginning it's super scary. And so that's when the bravery comes in. You have to give yourself, um, that like, you know, kick in the butt every day, like you can do it. And that's it's just right. going to take a little bit of risk and, you know, just pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, yeah, it's, I, I keep going back to the comparison of a kid and I don't have children yet, but I feel like that's going to be you will. Very similar. <laughs> yes. And it's so similar. Yes, um, it is. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like if it's, you know, working for other people, I think entrepreneurs, a lot of us want to work for ourselves because we want that freedom. That's we right. want to grow something that we are passionate about. Because if you're not working, you know, um, for yourself, then you're just helping somebody else build their passion. Yeah, exactly. And, but we need people to do everything. So, you know, not everybody should be an entrepreneur. It's, that's right. it's not for everyone and that's fine. Yeah. But for the people, I'm sure they're listening to your podcast. Those are the people that have that passion. Like they want that yeah. um, or they're in the thick of it, you know? So yeah, it's, it's so much more um, interesting and uh, it, you know, it keeps you going to work on your own thing. Just like if you have your own baby you're going to be exhausted. You're going to be frustrated. But you're going to take care of it. <laughs> but it's your baby and you love right. that baby so much that you don't care. You know, you're going to deal. But if it was your, you know, cousin's baby that you're babysitting and they're being a terror, you probably can't wait for them to leave and go back with their parent, you know? Yeah. You're it's like, I thought this child. was temporary. <laughs> right. So it's just different when the business yeah. is your child, then, you know, you'll give a hundred percent to make yeah. it happen. 300% for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's so good that you, you know, you bring up these points and clearly I think you've defined brave all the way through. And um, so as we kind of wrap up, I would love to know um, what, what's your next brave? Like you're kind of in that early stage of, of two years or a couple years. Right. Like what is the next brave you see on the horizon that you have to step into? Oh my goodness. Well, I think for me, cause I'm, I'm definitely an introvert. Bert. I am not a uh, super like pers enjoyable, like social person going to events and things like that. Um, I do them, but it is definitely pushing myself because I'm, right. I'm so introverted. So for me, I think the next things are going to be getting out there more like, um, you know, in person to get my brand out there. So whether it's, you know, going on um, any kind of like 
local TV appearances or things where like this, I mean, you know, you're incorporating, uh, you know, video to this possibly now. And, and that's a new thing, you know, yep. showing your face as an introvert and having, <laughs> yes. knowing that people are looking at you while you're explaining something that you care so much about, it's like putting your whole self out for everybody yeah. to see. And yeah. that can be so scary. But for me, I think that's what I need to do the most is work on that and put myself out there. So hopefully I'll be doing more like in-person things and, you know, I'm the face of my brand. So I want to, I want to really own that and push myself. Yeah. I love that, you know, cause I'm an introvert too. Um, okay. Video yes. has not been the, so you understand. I, I fake it well. <laughs> yeah, you do. I, uh, I say I'm, I really am. I mean, I was shy, 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 shy as a child and, and even in my twenties. Yeah. But I was willing, it's like, I'll, I'm willing to show up and do it in the space. Of, and I think that's why brave right. is such a core value for me. Uh, I've always been brave. It's like, I'll just, you know, it's kind of like suck it up and do it anyway. Um, right. but, but video has been, that's why I've, I'm pushing myself to be more Good. visible on video and Facebook yeah. lives. And, and so I honor that, you know, because wherever you're uncomfortable is like potentially well, it's stepping into your potential, right? Because right. the potential of, of people seeing us and, um, and seeing who you really are, connecting faster, more accelerated relatedness uh, yeah. is why I'm, I'm willing to like, okay, get over my butterflies, get over whatever I have going on about video <laughs> and yeah. do it anyway. And even doing the podcast initially in audio was nerve wracking. And I'm I was sure. like, how do I interview? Yeah. Like, I don't even know how to do this. And, um, did and so <laughs> I did it and I'm yeah. doing this now, you know, more frequently for the sake of the bigger purpose. You know, it's not right. about my uncomfortableness or even yours, right? It's yeah. not about the nerves or the, it's about how do you show up for people so that they can experience what you, um, your amazing gift. And I honor you for right. that. And I hold the space for you. Oh, thank um, you so much. All of that. Cause I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. I know it doesn't look like it. That's why we're here. I'm like, yeah, it's funny with the look <laughs> thing. Like you said, you hide it well. Um, yeah. I've done two TV appearances locally here in Jacksonville and both mm -hmm. times on the inside, I felt like I was nervous and I didn't know what was coming out of my mouth, you know, kind of thing like that surreal feeling. Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's, once it's over and I'm driving in my car to go home, I felt this like rush of like, wow, I'm so glad that I did that. Yeah. It was terrifying for me in the moment. But now I have this, you know, physical thing. I have myself on tape talking about my brand and you know, that real thing now that I can share with people that I would have never had if I wouldn't have taken that chance and just pushed myself a little bit farther. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, obviously don't push yourself so far that you like make yourself sick over something. That's not healthy, but <laughs> push yourself enough that you yeah. feel that nerve. Everyone. Yeah, time, the nerve, you know? the excitement. And I think that's yeah. the thing is we can start to create, like let the butterflies be excitement and motivate you versus yeah. the, you know, I'm going to get sick. doesn't mean I've never felt nauseous. I mean, oh, yeah. especially when I did a three day event in front of a live audience, oh, I'm like, I can only imagine. it was like, I was not good that first morning. <laughs> yeah. I just try to think about, I remember those feelings after it's yeah. over. What, how, what was that feeling that I felt, you know, in the car on the way home, Right. that sense of like relief that, yeah, I'm not on the stage anymore, but right. you know, <laughs> I did it and I accomplished it. Next time I'm getting ready to do something like that. And I'm feeling those nerves creep in. I just try to focus on how I felt after. And I have to remember that I yeah. did the thing. I might've felt like I was going to throw up before, but I didn't. And I went through it. I, I said what I wanted to say and I shared my yeah. message and then afterwards, I felt awesome. And yeah. so if I could do that once, I could do it again. Yeah, and that's the confidence muscle that grows, right? The more we do it, the more it'll exactly. get. Exactly. Yeah. We can reframe it much faster and much easier, and it'll be just fine. We survive, right? It's yeah. Right, right through it. So this is so good. Thank you for sharing that. I know that was vulnerable and, and open and, uh, you know, and yet, you know, the truth also be said, you know, that yeah. I too have dealt with that. And, and there's, I know there's plenty of people out there that can resonate with that. And that's why, you know, I appreciate you sharing because that's what this show's all about is just kind of the inside scoop of, of what's, what we're all about, you know, and, and what it takes. And it's bottom line is you got to just find the necessity in all of it so that you will overcome those things and get your brave on at a whole nother level. I always say brave daily, right? Yeah. And 
Um, and so, uh, so as we wrap up, what is the best way people can connect with you? Um, you can find me or they can find me on ashleyshelley.com, which is my website. And, um, I'm on Instagram as Ashley Shelley as well. I'm on there a lot posting sneak peeks and things like that from my brand and what's going on behind the scenes. Great. Um, and I'm also on Facebook at Ashley Shelley official. Um, so okay. yeah. And I actually have a coupon code that I'd love to share with your listeners. If yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thank you. If they go to ashleyshelley.com, they can, anything that they purchase, um, there's no minimum purchase or anything like that, whatever they would like to pick out for themselves that might be helpful, any kind of planning products, um, they can just put the code BRAVE15 in at checkout Great. and they'll get 15% off their whole order and that's awesome. good forever, so yeah. Awesome, thank you for that. I love no that, problem. thanks for using our word, <laughs> our keyword. Right. Yeah. Brave. I love it. And, um, so everybody will make sure that, uh, you know, we'll put your website and all of those links okay, great. in the show notes and, uh, and thanks for that amazing gift. I really no problem. that. So as we close, what's the one thing, if this was your last video, last conversation, never to speak again, what is the one message you want people to know? Um, I would say to take risks and, yeah. and just put yourself out there. It's totally worth it. It's okay to take a calculated risk. I'm very much a numbers person, like we talked about earlier. So, you know, you don't have to just take these blind risks. It can be calculated. You can think about it and have a plan. Um, but at the end of the day, there's still going to be that risk. It's never going to be for sure in this, you know, business, small business entrepreneurship world. Um, there's always going to be those risks, but it's for me, I don't regret any of them. So I feel like it's going to be the same for everybody else that's on the similar path. So yeah. yeah, don't be afraid to take the risk. And, you know, I suggest because I'm a planner girl, have a plan along <laughs> with that risk. Um, cause that will just set you up for success even yeah. more, but you still have to take the risk. So, so good. Take the risk. I love it. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here. Thank You're you. beautiful. I love your brand and all thank of that. So, so I'm really, uh, really feel blessed that you, you know, shared your time with us. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Jenna. Yeah, you're welcome. And just a reminder to everyone watching and listening is to let's go get our brave on and brave daily. Talk to you guys soon.